Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to my August wrap up and I have eight books to talk about. So as you all know, kind of like my thing, what I'm known for is that I am a really slow reader, but August has surprised me because I have finished eight books, short stories, nonfiction works, fantasy book. I have read so many things. I think my brain was like, Sabine, this is your last month of freedom of 2020. So just, you know, read some books. Let's just get into the wrap up. And the first book that I have to talk about, I already mentioned this in my July wrap up, but I actually finished it on the 2nd of August. And I just want to have another excuse to talk about this book. And that is The Poppy War by R.F. Kwan. This was the July and August pick for the World Readers Book Club, which is a bi-monthly book club that I'm co-hosting together with Leonie from the book Leo. I think you would classify this book as an adult grimdark fantasy in which we follow our main character called Rin. She is a dark-skinned girl in this world called the Nakara Empire and there is a lot of racism first of all going on in this world so she's definitely looked down upon first of all because of her skin color but also she comes from quite like a poor family in the southern part of the country and she's trying to get accepted into this very elite military school and for that she needs to get through the keiju test. The test happens and people are so surprised when they find out that Rin has been accepted into this military school and in this military school you train to become like a soldier. She gets so many lessons in all of these different subjects which was so interesting to read about and there's also definitely some danger lurking over the country for a third poppy war which is like the title of this story. This book has three parts and all the parts are kind of different especially part one versus part two and three part one has definitely more of like a boarding school kind of vibe in which our main character learns so much about kind of how the country is set up and she trains in all these different subjects with some really crazy teachers and you get to know her fellow students as well and i loved part one so much i think a little bit more than part two and three and i've heard from people who have read this book that you either like love part part one a whole lot more than part two or the other way around. And I think I'm a little bit more on the side of part one in this story, but I also loved part two and three. It deals a lot with war strategies and stuff like that and political intrigue. It is such a good book and it deals with so many heavy topics. So there are definitely like some trigger warnings for racism and rape, self-harm and so many other things that you need to look out for if you're going to read this book. So it's a very heavy, very action packed fantasy story and I loved the crap out of this book and I think I gave this one like a five out of five stars and I cannot wait to read The Dragon Republic which is the sequel but it's very big so we will see when I get to it. After that I wanted to read something else than fantasy and then I picked up Loveless by Ellis Oseman and this is one of her most recent releases about our main character called Georgia and Georgia has never been in love before and she's really quite confused with like who she is and and she struggles a lot with that and she's also going to university together with two of her best friends and she gets introduced during this book with the terms asexual and aromantic and she's kind of like trying to figure out what her identity is and stuff like that. So overall, I really quite enjoyed this book. I just love Ellis Oseman's writing style. So whenever I pick up one of her books, I know that I'm going to be able to finish it in just a couple of days, even though this book is like 430 pages. So it's a pretty big YA contemporary. And what I really liked about this book is definitely, you know, just that whole journey that she's going on. And I also really love seeing characters go into university and especially Georgia is kind of like how I am with my university experience. I haven't made that many other friends. I'm not a really big party type of gal. <laughs> so I could relate to Georgia on that level. I have heard or like read some tweets on like book Twitter that the representation for like a pen sexual character in this book wasn't that great. And there have been popping up some things on Twitter, which were just not that great with representation. There is also a non-binary person in this story. And what I noticed whilst reading this book is that they don't call the non-binary person they or them, but but they say he a lot of the times, which just made me feel a little confused about 
that because I'm like, if the person identifies as non-binary, they would probably like to be called they and them more often than he. It just felt a little bit weird. Although I enjoyed it a lot, I do see that this book has some flaws. I think overall I still rated it a 4 out of 5 stars, but maybe the more that I read reviews about this book, that rating can be adjusted. After that, I finished a non-fiction book, but it deals with such important and heavy subjects, and that is White Fragility, Why It's So Difficult to Talk to White People About Race by Robin DiAngelo. I just wanted to finally finish this book because this is a non-fiction book about racism and anti-racism written by a white author, and I have definitely learned some really good topics from this book, and this book introduced me to them, and I've been looking up lots of things online, but I just want to read non-fiction books about racism or anti-racism written by black authors. By the way, I have some links in the description box down below regarding the Black Lives Matter movement, but also just for some information about the LGBTQ community because I just also talked about Loveless and stuff like that. The fourth book short story that I want to talk about is The Red-Headed Leak by Arthur Conan Doyle. So I was listening to this book as an audiobook and I think I was a little bit distracted whilst I was reading it. It didn't really keep my attention, so I cannot really tell you what it's about. Honestly, I don't remember much of the story, and it kind of feels like I didn't really consume it at all, so I might be taking it off of my, like, read list, because I was listening to this audiobook so absent-mindedly it's insane. <laughs> but I do know that when I listened to it, I wasn't like super surprised or really intrigued by it. So I think I gave it like a two and a half out of five stars. After that, I read a booktube book community favorite of the moment, and that is You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. And I'm sad to say that this is not one of my new favorite books. This is a female female YA romance novel. And we follow our main character called Liz, and she has some amazing ambitions for the future. However, she doesn't have a lot of money and she tries to solve this by entering the prom queen competition because when you are crowned prom king or prom queen you get a really amazing scholarship and that is all that Liz needs right now to fulfill her future dreams so she has to deal with this competition this school also has a very chitty chatty rumor social media app so she has to deal with all of that and there is this one new girl in her school who makes this ordeal a whole lot more more easily to get through and that is mech and they kind of like form this friendship possibly a little bit more than just that <laughs> and what I really liked about this book is definitely the female female romance I thought that that was really amazing that that was represented in this book and also that our main character is a black girl this was a very happy story but it was also a little bit cheesy and it has one of my pet peeves that I have with books in it and that is insta love to me this romance was very insta lovey <laughs> and I just don't like that about books personally so that that already made me love and root for the romance less in this book. I do know that like insta love is a valid thing and that people definitely experience it. I rarely see this about contemporary novels but with this one I wish that it was 100 pages longer to kind of like get to know the characters a bit better. What I also didn't particularly like is that all the side characters kind of blended into the same person for me. So in my head all of the guys were these stereotypical jocks and all the girls were these stereotypical mean girls. So that was a little bit sad. One other thing that I want to mention that I did really like about this book is that sickle cell disease is mentioned in this story because it was just very interesting and I think necessary to get to know a bit more about the disease. I think I would gave this one like a three out of five stars just because the stereotypes were a little bit too much for me it just I, I didn't really like that about this book and the insta love bothered me a little bit and I didn't particularly ship the love interest with our main character but I know that a lot of people will love this book so if you want like a really romantic funny but also serious YA romance definitely pick up you should see me in a crown by Leah Johnson after that I finally picked up a non-fiction book about anti-racism written 
by a biracial author and that is this book is anti-racist by tiffany jewel and illustrated by aurelia duran this is i believe a non-fiction book about anti-racism aimed towards a little bit of a younger audience and i think even if you are a little older like i am i'm 21 this book is a perfect introduction to anti-racism and racism in general the author gives very clear examples of all of these different topics so things that are being discussed in this book are what is race what is racism prejudice taking action interrupting people solidarity spending your privilege allyship building relationships loving yourself it deals with so many different topics and all of the illustrations in the book just they are also so what is also very present in this book is different activities so the author encourages you to like write down who you are what are kind of like the labels that you identify with and it was very interactive it was really informative I think that this would be a perfect first book to read about anti-racism it was just really good that's all that I have to say for it right now and I definitely encourage you to pick this one up if you want to get to know more about that subject let's go on to book number seven that I have to talk about so from August until October, I am co-hosting The Conjuring of Readalongs together with Jasmine from Jasmine the Reader. So we are currently reading the A Darker Shade of Magic trilogy by V.E. Schwab. And in August, I finished reading A Darker Shade of Magic, the first book in this trilogy. And this was actually a reread for me because the last time I read this book, it was somewhere in 2017, but I had forgotten so much about the story. So it kind of felt like I was reading this book for the first time. We follow Kel and he is one of the last Antares and an Antari is a person a magician who can travel between parallel Londons because that is what this story this fantasy book mainly focuses on you have grey London which is very similar to our world you have red London which is full of magic and kind of like in a positive way it feels so wonderful then you also have white London in which the magic has kind of overruled the people and it's a little bit more sinister a little bit more dark and then lastly you have black London which has has been totally consumed by magic and it's a very very dark place and a hobby of Cal a very dangerous and illegal hobby of his is to like take items take little trinkets and stuff like that from different Londons and smuggling them to other Londons and he kind of gets in trouble with that once he comes onto this different talisman and you kind of follow the story from that point on it is written in third person but there is this other really big character in the story as well which is Lila Bart who wants to become a pirate her story and Cal's story kind of get mixed up and and I enjoyed rereading this book so much. I definitely think the world building in this book and the characters are my favorite things about this. I don't know how Victoria Schwab does it, but her writing style is just so amazing that she makes you care for even the side characters. Even if they are only in the story for like 20 pages, you are already like, damn, this is making me feel things. Oh my god. <laughs> and I just really love the story. I love all the different Londons and they intrigue me so, so much. And I cannot wait to continue on with this trilogy so I will definitely be starting a gathering of shadows very soon and then last but definitely not least I read Nachtflinder by Teske de Schepper and if you are Dutch you have probably heard from Teske so she has been making YouTube videos for over I think 10 years and I started following her around that time when I was like an 11 year old girl back then she mainly made like makeup videos but now she's more into like lifestyle and sharing her love for vegan food and plants and she has written this book I think somewhere at the end of 2019 this is I'd say a mixture between non-fiction and poetry and I I didn't really know what to expect. I never really pick up a book written by a YouTuber just because, I don't know, some of them just seem like not necessary or like they would be a disappointment but this one was definitely not. It dealt a lot with subjects such as loving yourself, doubting yourself. Seska also talked a lot about love not only for her friends, not only for her partner but also for animals. I feel like I am going through a lot of the things that Tesca has been going through in her life as well such as comparing yourself not really loving yourself sometimes doubting what you can do and just I don't know I could recognize myself so much in the struggles that Tesca had her talking about it made me feel so encouraged and calm and I don't know it just helped me so much to read about those subjects so I give this one a four out of five stars and I cannot wait to see what she will write next because I really enjoyed reading about her poetry and the little like nonfiction or even sometimes fiction stories in between felt just perfect 
and I really, really enjoyed this story. Okay, this video was surprisingly a struggle to film. I couldn't really like find the words that I wanted to say and it didn't come out right, but I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. Definitely let me know which books you have read in August, if you enjoyed them or not, or even if you read some of the books which I showed you guys today. Again, thank you so much for watching and I hope that I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!